welcome back to Computers for the Completely Clueless. We've got our set upgrade here, Dr. Butler. Definitely better than Kim. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And we're talking about browsers. Uh, what browser do you use at home? I'm guilty of using the Internet Explorer browser at home. Only just, it comes with my computer, and it was easy. I set it up, but, you know, at work, I use a couple of different browsers. Oh, really? That's yeah. good. Yeah. Well, I, one of the things that on our show here that... Um, is a little bit misleading is the version of Internet Explorer that we're using mm -hmm. because we're still using version 6 on the show because we're going to show you how to update it someday. So that's a rather old version. Are you using uh, 6 or 7 at home? I think I'm using 6. Really? Mm -hmm. okay. 6 does not have tab browsing, and that's that's a major drawback. With it. Oh, wait, then I'm using 7. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, unless you look, you're, you're clueless on that's that right. one. That's yeah. right. That's well, right. And where would you look? Well, I don't I, you even know, what? know. I'm going to show you that in a minute here. And how do you get a new one? I'll show you. How, well, that won't be in this show, but we'll be oh, doing okay. that next All week right. or the week after. But let's go back to our uh, browser here. And uh, let's answer Heather's question right away. This works for almost every single program. When you want to find out the version of the program you're using, go to Help. And then as you go down to the bottom, you always see something that says About, and usually the, the name of the program. Okay. I'm going to click on that. And there we are, version 6. So Easy enough. <laughs> that's how you find out. And uh, sometimes it, it's hard to tell just by looking at it. Mm -hmm. But we want to talk about some other things in here. One of the things we were going to talk about was the view. Okay, we're going to go down here. And one of the most important things people have is that text size. And yes. <laughs> I think I, I was using an Internet browser for like three years before I knew this existed. And you just go to, to view and scroll down to text size, and you can see right now we're set to smaller. Well, if you're having trouble reading your web browser. If your double nickels are above. Mm -hmm, we can go to <laughs> larger text. And you'll notice the text size changed right here in the body of our, our mm -hmm. text on the website. It doesn't change something that might be done as a graphic. Right. Do you see the graphics on this page? Yes, I do. Yeah, where? This is graphic. Very good. Heather Sharp. Yeah, all these buttons at the top are graphics. So since they're not they're true locked. text, they're, they're not going to change. Right. It would only be in the editable regions of the web page. Very good. Editable, the big word. Okay, and we can change that back anytime. But if you're really blind, I mean, that's as big as it's going to get there, which is pretty good for reading. And you know what I noticed when I discovered this? Because I just recently discovered this about six months ago, that... It doesn't work in different software applications. No, this is just in the browser. Uh, one of the things you mentioned before, and this isn't really for our beginners, but if you wanted to see how the web page was created, you could look at the source code. And that opens it up in a program called Notepad. Mm -hmm. And i uh, bring that up here so we can see a little better. And this is basically what makes this web page work. But it brought it up in Notepad so you're no longer in the browser you can't make it bigger. No. And that's what I was trying to do because I can't see anything up close with that. Yeah, you'd have to uh, actually change the, the font size on it. So that's that part. Under view, you'll find a whole lot of things like that. One of my favorite things is shortcut keys. I love those. And I, I like seeing the full screen, too. And down here, you see the word full screen, mm -hmm. two words, actually, and F11, which is the shortcut key. And when we click on that, the web page goes to the full screen. So often people come up to me and say, I don't know how to get back out of here. What do I do? What do I do? You get lost on that very easily. Uh, all you have to do is hit F11 again, and it toggles it back. Could you hit escape? No. Would that work? No, that won't work on this one. No. In fact, I'll hit escape there. No. Now, this is version 6, and you'll notice at the top we still have a little bar that gives us our little shortcuts to, like, uh, back a page, forward a page, stop, refresh, home, and, and the other associated ones. The new version, it totally disappears. But I notice you still have to scroll up and down. If the it page won't put doesn't the whole fit, thing right. Okay. It'll, it'll go whatever size you need on it. Now, we, we've talked about other programs in here. If we go to Firefox, now this is a new version of Firefox. And like I said, the new version of Internet Explorer will do full screen without that bar at the top. But when I hit F11 here, everything disappears. 
so we've got the entire screen. Makes it nice for reading if you don't have to change pages. If I'm just following links, I can click on these links and go through it, and I never really have to see my address bar. So I can go through all these things. But what if you wanted to go backwards? If I wanted to go if backwards. If you wanted to go back to that screen you just went to. That's a good question, Heather. I love shortcut keys. If I hold down the Alt key and use the left arrow, that goes back a page. Oh. Now, if you're on a Macintosh computer, it's the Command key and the left arrow. But otherwise, it's the Alt key and then the, okay. on the PC. Now, one bad thing that I found that um, browsers is like Internet Explorer. You're, you're not going to find that anymore on the uh, the Macintosh platform. But you'll find Firefox. Firefox will not go to a full screen on the Macintosh. They just don't have that available yet. I'd like to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see them do that. Okay. So that was it for that part of the view. Now, if we go back here, let's see, what else were we going to talk about briefly here? Okay, we're going to we, status bar and add on. So let's go back here to uh, this. The status bar can be turned on and off under view too. You see the check mark in front of it? Mm -hmm. When we check that again, it turns off the status bar at the bottom of our screen. What would be the benefit of having your status bar? Well, as Kim and I mentioned last week, we love the status bar because it gives you clues. For example, if I move my mouse over this link, mm -hmm. it tells me where I'm going to go. It also says there that pop-ups are not allowed. So I know that my pop-up blocker is going to hit this. And how do you get rid of that? Well, unfortunately, that one is done through our district filter. If it was done through the... Uh, the Google bar that we have up here. It would have a pop-up blocker. Right. Okay. I'm going to show you how to do that in the next set. But it tells you where you're going to go, where that link would go. For example, this one will take you to the uh, Palm Breeze Cafe site that we do the live show online. So the taskbar gives you information about that. The taskbar we talked about last week, too, that's also where you see the lock down at the bottom when you're on a secure site. So if we go to something like... Uh, uh, I think Kim went to uh, Bank America, and it didn't keep it in the history for some reason. Yes, I know I'm about to leave there. And uh, when we go to a secure site down on the taskbar, this is where you see that you're on a secure site. So having your status bar active, very good thing to do. It's going to give you important information. Okay, and then uh, there was one other thing we were going to talk about here, and I'm drawing a blank on what it was, naturally. Oh, the oh, add-ons. Add okay. Add-ons are, th there aren't many add-ons on the, the Internet Explorer platform. So if we go to Firefox, we can go to a site. Th this is our add-ons window. I'm actually going to close this and uh, come right back to it in a second here. In Firefox, there are all kinds of programs written that you can add on to it. And we just go to the add-ons pop-up, and when we click to this, it'll take us to a web page that has lots of add-ons that you can use. So if you want to look for something for, say, video, or maybe capturing video from video sites, we just type that in there, and it's going to go out and find add-ons that we could add to Firefox to make it easy to do those things. And these are basically free add-ons, so nice things. It's one of the advantages of using Firefox. It's a, a favorite. Do you use Firefox? No. No? Well, we'll have to get you started on <laughs> that. We're going to come back on computers for the completely clueless in a minute, and we're going to talk a little bit more about browsers, and I think we're about done with browsers for this uh, show. We'll be moving on after that show. Stay with us.